Hey guys, so I'm going to go here, I'm going to go over how to paint weights in Maya. You can see my guy's broken up a little bit unusual. Just for the fact that he has a vest, I will be putting end cloth on him later on. I can include that in another tutorial. And uh, let's turn him off x-ray so we can actually see him a little bit better. So we'll uh, get him out of x-ray mode right now. And you'll see that we have our guy already set up, ready to go. Um, I could probably smooth him out a little bit more, and I can do that real quick and just delete by type history. I'll do that for all pieces. Just make it a little easier for us to paint weights in this case. Um, this is my big buff dude. So let me go in and smooth him. Switch to modeling real quick. And go to mesh and smooth. There we go. Nice little smooth detail. And uh, mainly we're just going to focus on the limbs and so forth. Oh, looks like that chugged a little bit. That's fine. We'll go in here and select. Go to object type. There he goes. Now it goes back to normal. And uh, let's delete by type history on both of these guys. Edit delete by type. Now the only time you want to do this is when the object is not rigged. When it is rigged and you found out, oh man, I forgot that I had history on it, do non-deformer history. Keep that in mind, because if you delete by type history and your character has been skinned, you will strip it of its information. Now right now he's not skinned, so I can delete his history real quick here. So we're mainly just going to, um, for now, going to paint weights on his arms here and just keep it uh, kind of simple here. Notice I have x-ray joints on. This allows me to see my joints in my scene as I'm working. If you need to rename your joints, and you will at one point, if you uh, start to build your rig, you want to make sure everything's organized, you can actually go here, go to rename, and as you select multiple bones, you can say, hey, that's the shoulder. It'll actually, um, you can do like, sh select this guy, and we'll just pretend we have to rename this. Just like this guy here, we can just say, oh, if we wanted to just call it arm. And when you do that, you'll notice it actually it makes this guy arm and this guy arm. That's arm one and arm two. And I'm going to control Z that because that is not my naming scheme. So you can get an idea. You can actually select multiples. And that's what I did for the fingers. I went in here and I grabbed the fingers. And you can see like one, two. Typically, you could do like mid, middle finger, mid index finger. I did not do this in, the, in that case. I just kind of left it as is. Um, I'm not using centering key, which would uh, a lot of times be a little easier with that. Um, but I'm just using straight up uh, FK fingers, which I can, uh, which I've demonstrated in another video. And uh, all right, so let's go ahead and go forward here. So I'm not going to smooth his vest just yet. Again, that will be for uh, another part that I'll be working on. But for now, we're just going to smooth these guys right here. We're going to talk about painting weights in general, what to look out for, how to fix things. And how to get things to work in your favor. So let's go in here and switch to animation real quick. In animation, we're going to go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind, open up the options for it. Um, now you'll see there are some new options if you've messed with this before. Um, there is also post, which is new since I think 2011. Don't use it. It doesn't work very well. What it does, it tries to make it so your, uh, your undos work a little bit more consistent. Um, I've never had a need to use post and when I've tried to teach it, it is broken on everyone that's ever touched it. So you want to go and use interactive whenever possible. There's classic linear, which will stick to you. Now there's dual quaternion, which you can use uh, for wrist twist that actually works pretty well. It evaluates those bones that rotate uh, like that. Um, but we're going to just do classic linear. Now weight blend, what that does, it tries to blend your weights for you, smooth them out ahead of time. I haven't got that to work really well. There's a lot of disclaimers here because my, I mean, it still needs some work. Uh, painting weights, um, I prefer to use XSI, but in this case, we're using Maya, so I'm explaining to you how, how, to, how that works. Classic linear is what we want to work with. Um, now we're not going to use heat map. Now the problem with heat map in my particular model, it doesn't like it when the model is semi-fragmented. Otherwise, it's not fully encapsulated. I have mine broken off a little bit because it doesn't know what to deal with geometry that's kind of split up. So keep that in mind. Again, we're just going to do um, clo uh, closest in hierarchy, which works really well. All right, so my maximum influence is going to be set to three. You can do five if you want. How this works is you will have uh, one for just black and white gradient initially and then if you go higher you'll get more grays so five will have a lot more grays and values in between white being complete influence and black being no influence and gray being in between okay maintain max influence that's fine you do want to colorize your joints and I'll explain that in just a second where it says colorize skeleton let's bind skin 
Bam! We got an arm. He looks pretty sexy, cool, huh? Look how buffed. He's smooth, really nice. He's even got a little dipper in there. That's so great. But we're going to go in here now. We're going to move him around a bit. Because what we're going to do is going to try and see what we can get out of this particular guy. So I'm going to quickly... I'm just going to go to X-Ray just for a second here. Let me see if my IKs... Hopefully this is the version with my IKs. It may not be. So just in case, we'll just go to uh, Display. And we'll go to our animation sets. And I go, I can handle size. Let's bump that up a little bit. There we go. That's probably the only reason. Yep, there you go. There he is. So I'm going to go in here and move this in. Notice I haven't finished setting up my IKFK switch. There's a video I have on that. Let's go ahead and move that in a little bit. Now, him being smooth gave us a little bit of an advantage here, but not a complete one. So we do want to go in here and take a look at this a little bit closer. So the nice thing about IK is now I moved that for a second, right? Let me go and put it back. I can actually go in here, right click on that IK, even bones and say set preferred angle. So I can go in here and move this in and earlier versions of my that wasn't always consistent. And you can say, hey man, uh, assume preferred angle. That puts it back. So it allows you to test things before maybe even if you don't have your controller set up, it actually works pretty well. So I moved that in. So now we're gonna do some painting weights. I'll show you how to go about painting and adjusting your weights as you go. Now when it comes to the arm, we do want these to press against each other. Um, you can use deformers to get that to work a little bit better. I don't have my elbow completely defined, so if I wanted to, I can actually even put a bone sticking out of that joint to push out a little bit more, make it a little more believable here. I do have my radius and ulna set up here. You see these two bones floating, so when I rotate the wrist, these guys will rotate around that wrist like an orbit. So let's go and paint weights. I can right click and paint skin weights tool. Take us directly there. Now, the nice thing about this is your hierarchy. Let's take a look at this real quick here. We can um, expand our influence list if we want to. You can also uh, reset the default. Um, we can shrink influence list if you want. So that actually allows you to isolate an object if you need. Notice ours is real short because I'm only doing the arm for this demo. We can do alphabetical order if we want. We can do by hierarchy if we want. We can even just keep it completely flat if that makes it easier for you. And that works better flat does when you have a smaller screen. You don't have a lot of room to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and play with this and talk about some of the parameters. Hitting the B key allows me to increase my brush size. Now, um, if you'll see here, you do have some new tools up here where you can copy your weights and you can paste them. This actually works okay. Sometimes it might give you a little bit of trouble. There's also hammer weights. And what this guy does, he averages out your weights. So I actually can find a region, even select it, right click, and I can go in here and do in paint selection mode. And I can try to hammer out my weights, average them out. This is a little buggy because sometimes it'll try to average out over the whole object and not necessarily the area that you're trying to isolate. You can also move weights to a selected influence if you want to. And there's also show influence on the selected vert. So you can actually see the influence on it. So if you select verts, you can see how much weights are being applied, which is pretty convenient. This seems to work pretty well. I've actually worked with this a couple times. Hasn't gotten buggy on me yet, but feel free to message me if that does give you issues. So um, two things you want to keep in mind here when it comes to painting weights, or at least actually I should say three systems. I like replace. Replace works pretty well for me. For other people, it hasn't. But for some reason, I've just got it to work. Maybe it's the, uh, the look of the Maya gods or something, but it works pretty well. Add, when, when, when replace isn't working good and smooth isn't working, you definitely want to stick to add. And what you can do is just go through your hierarchy. And as you go through your hierarchy, you can just add influence. And when you do, it will be pushed to a different area. All the way down the chain should work logically as you add. Um, you can also change your visual representation of weights. Now, if you want to, you can colorize using color ramp. This is stealing a little information from uh, XSI. Um, I don't really like the color ramp. I'm cool with the old school, um, but it's up to you. A blue being the least influence, black having no influence at all. But in this case, black is considered kind of the zero influence. So don't freak out if your blue sticks around and you're painting and using the color ramp. You're like, oh, it doesn't go away. Um, if that gives you trouble, you can always switch back to black and white and uh, you can see a better representation of it. All right, so we're going to increase a little bit of the influence here. So I'm going to switch this to replace. I'm going to put this back to maybe a medium range here. You can start out real slow. Oop. We want to uh, actually zero it out, my bad. So let's zero this out just a little bit there. And when you do, you cause your, uh, let me do a happy medium. You can see the undos are working pretty well, so we don't have to keep it to post. Remember I talked about that post being the other option. Let me go to Control-Z a little bit more. There we go. And uh, grab this guy. 
And let's go to that bone in particular. What we'll do is we'll put it probably right about on that. And sometimes you gotta guess this out. We'll do maybe right about the middle. Let's see what we get with the middle. Oh, too much pull up. So we'll go a little bit lower here. And maybe a little bit higher. Maybe you just need to be a little bit higher here. Now it's looking at the bone and what it does, it's pushing back into it. So let me do control C real, real quick. Da -da -da. And we'll go back to this bone. There we go. We'll try this guy. So um, if you do find it sometimes fighting you, just adjust your uh, mount, replace and add. I'm going to switch to the other bone just because it makes a little bit more sense. And then we can go in here and play with this influence. You'll notice that's a little bit high. So we'll do Control Z. And then we can just lower this just a little bit. And again, it's a matter of just playing with some of your range. Now I'm just going to push this guy in here just for ridiculous on purpose and you're gonna see we're gonna use a smooth tool to smooth that out so when he's pretty bluffed and when he's moving his arm you'll see it uh, kind of get a little bit heavier here so what we can do is you can also go inside the arm and we can switch to smooth and we have our opacity that we can control and you can strengthen that opacity if you want to And we can smooth it in the over here. Look at that, it's working pretty well. Some instructors you'll hear say, smooth sucks, I hate it. And I actually like it, I don't have a problem with it. It's never really given me any trouble whatsoever. We'll go back in the arm, get this a little more smooth value. And it's basically like averaging out your weights, up close and personal. And I'm trying to get that nice press in you get for the arm. It's actually working out really nice. It does look like he's kind of buffed in this region. All right, sorry. Bad Arnold Schwarzenegger. Should not be in lecture videos. All right. <laughs> so we go in here and uh, average out some more. Look at that. Look, working like a champ. Working like a champ. So we can go in here and go to the next part of the arm and give it that same type of look. Now you'll notice it's working on two different weight levels, which is actually working okay to our advantage. And again, we can probably smooth this out in here a little bit. Smooth it in here. Yep, looks like we got a hard crease right there still. Hard to see silhouette-wise, so we we'll go and fix that a little bit. There we go. And again, at any time, you can keep increase your brush here and average it out. All right, so it's a matter of just adjusting your placement and movement. Now, in this case, I'm going to have to probably adjust his geo, give him more of a hardcore elbow. He's always had baby elbows, which I need to fix. And for those that have had my class, know what I'm talking about. And I can actually put a deformer in here later on. And I have a video on deformers, and I can push that muscle back out. So notice I already had the muscle in flex mode because of the way his uh, neutral position. And I can push that out. And again, we can use a smooth tool smooth some of this out a little bit so you don't get the hard angles in there and again we can mess with our opacity now you can also let's go back to add you can also use the dropper when you say you're using add even replace and you can select an area of weights that you want to to, to grab you can select hey i want this value your sliders will adjust opacity and value according to where that's at and that's actually kind of nice it's one of the newer tools they tried to implement a while back and it wasn't working so great but i've seen that it works pretty well it's not too shabby um let me see here okay let's say we have a pesky weight this weight won't adjust we have been trying really hard looks like we got this so far looking pretty good we just maybe need to smooth it out a little bit on the forearm but maybe we'll just say there's an area that's giving us trouble we'll say right down here is a good example see those double pinching a little bit in here so we'll say let's go ahead and grab this and we can do it multiple ways we can just literally grab the vertices or you can also go into a paint selection vert mode. Now we're not in paint mode anymore. You don't see the paint vert selection, but we do see the general generic one. So I do a vert right there, select, grab these guys. So we can go to Windows, General Editors, and we're going to go to the Component Editor. And in the Component Editor, we can slide over and we can go in here and say smooth skin and look at our values here. So I can open this up a little bit and I can see where the problem may be lines. So you know, like, oh man, these these vertices over here um, I don't want maybe the elbow to influence this or the shoulder let's say the shoulder we don't want the shoulder to work on vertex 8 so I can set that to 0 and when it does it shuffles it so let's actually we don't go to uh, sorry I was looking at the total we don't want to do total and we'll do a 0 here sorry my lovely wife walked in she totally distracted me so we can put 0 here and we can go to the next one we can put uh, a 0 on this guy 
and you'll see it shift. See that shifting in the background there? So what's happening is I'm adjusting the weights. Now, be careful, this one went too far. So let me do Control Z. That was me just getting a little too happy there. There you go, put him back. So we can actually even put, he's a 0.5 right now. It's actually, he probably doesn't even need to mess with him. But let's do, oh, looks like I selected more than I needed. Let's put this guy to 0.5 again. You'll see it adjust. And we'll do this guy 0.5, I believe that's who he is. There you go. And let's, yeah, let's give him a little bit more 0 0.002. Let's try that. No, he doesn't like that either. How about zero, buddy? He doesn't like that either. What a jerk. So we'll go in here and, uh, Let's see how we can adjust him. His average weight over here. Let's try this guy, because we can see this one's zero. Now this one has kept his weight, so let's maybe increase him a little bit. So let's do 0 0.5. Let's see if he adjusts or not. 0 0.5, there we go. And then make this one 0 0.5, there we go. Or even lower, point. Still giving me a little bit of trouble. So typically, though, what this guy does, he can actually, let's change our different value here. What you're able to do is correct your placement. That wasn't much of a change of your weight values on these objects. And it all is going to add up to one. That's the total that it's going to try to shoot for. Now, this guy is too strong. So we're going to try and do um, 0 0.06. Move them. There you go. Nice little compromise. And uh, we can probably adjust that a little bit more. We can do uh, 0, 0.0. I don't know. Um, ah, too many, too many points on there. My bad for that. 0, 0, 0.00. Let's say seven. Adjusted or even lower than that. We'll go four or even three. So you can see you can play with these, which is kind of nice. It does take a little bit more math. Make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. Don't let your wife distract you. And, and you can go in here and actually change your values as you go. Um, let me see. Is there anything else here I want to show you? Um, let me see here. I think it's about it for this guy. So again, watch your values at all. It's all going to add up to one. And you can shuffle each one of these guys as you... All right, so that's about it. Uh, I will talk to you guys later.